Hi and welcome back to another video where I'm going to be exploring um, the subject of light against the dark again in this line and wash watercolour painting here that was inspired by a beautiful photograph that I found on Pixabay. I'll leave the link in the description below. As you can see I've simplified it quite a lot um, and I'll show you how, how I did that. Um, I literally just picked out the bare bones of the painting, the shape of the boathouse, the shape of the trees, the shape of the rocky beach and lakeside um, and the distant hills in the background um, in pencil. Um, I could use an eraser if I needed to to make adjustments and once I felt my drawing was okay and balanced out and accurate enough um, I then went in with my fine liner pens to do the line work for the line and wash. And the fine liners that I like using at the moment are the waterproof Pigma Microns and Faber-Castell Artist Pit Pens. It's important that your fine liners are waterproof because we're going to be painting over them. Um, so just check that before you start on a painting like this. So this is a 0.8 nib and it's quite a fine one and so I'm drawing around the outline of the boathouse. The reason I always like to get my pencil sketch nice and accurate is because it makes the line work really easy to start with. Um, all I need to do is go over my pencil lines with the ink and everything sort of should go okay. So I'm working across the um, the sketch adding in extra details like sort of the rocks and things like that I'm just putting in a few outlines here and there and slowly building up my um, my composition with a couple of trees uh, right on the edge and then I'm going to have some taller trees with sort of lighter um, sort of canopies that you can see the sky through um, and the light from the early evening sunset will mostly be catching um, the building, the boathouse. I need to get some dark in though, here and there, which will be the just in the doorway here. So, um, and then at the base of the of the boathouse. And following the photograph, my trees are going to be almost completely in shadow. I will get a little bit of dark green paint into them, I hope, but mostly they will just be the dark black from the fine liners. I shall just build up, slowly build up the texture um, with my fine liners. I've got a 1.5 uh, millimeter fine liner for the much wider lines. Um, that gives me a nice wide um, mark for the tree trunks without having to sort of spend time with a very fine, fine liner sort of scribbling away. I can just get my darks in with single strokes of the pen. When you do um, a line and wash painting, it's a really nice um, way of painting. It can be quite easy once you get the drawing right. Um, but you just have to remember that unlike um, a pure watercolour where you generally work from light to dark, um, we're working from dark and then to mid-tones. And what we're doing is creating our light with our very lightest tones and any areas of unpainted paper um, that we leave. So I'm using my fine liners to create just about all of my darks. The boathouse is the focal point, so I'm working around that the most. I'm giving that the most detail. Most of the rocky areas leading into the lakeside are going to be pretty much just very suggestive of rocks, very impressionistic. The only real um, detail that will be discerned at the end of the painting is the kind of corrugated iron roof of the boathouse and the wooden sides, the planking, and these um, taller trees that will stand out against the blue sky. So 
So I've just run a very fine, faint line across the horizon and the distant hills, and I'm shading that in with single hatching, uh, diagonal hatching marks, uh, just to darken it up a little bit. But I'm not going to do any more than that to it. And then continue to work on building up the dark tones in my painting. With a line and wash painting, the line work, especially if you're like me and you like to get in um, a lot of your darks using the ink pens can take quite a while but it can be a very satisfying way of painting because when you come to paint um, all you have to do is think carefully about where you want um, to preserve the light and where you want to put some colour. In this case because I'm going to be painting an evening sunset then I want to have my sunset glow in the sky but I also want that glow to be very faintly reflected in the water. Um, but I think the mistake a lot of people make if they paint sunsets and try to paint the, the atmospheric light of early evening or even early morning is they forget the fact that there's a lot of reflected light from a sunset that actually hits the land, the trees and the buildings. And so you often see um, paintings where there's a beautiful sunset but there's absolutely no evidence of that in the rest of the painting. So what I'm hoping to do is show you um, how you can uh, bring the light into the rest of your painting as the reflected light uh, from the sunset um, hits the beach, the rocks, uh, the boathouse and the trees. Right, time to paint. Today I'm using Milford 100% cotton cold pressed paper. It's taped to my board and my board is at an angle of about 45 degrees so that gravity will help me to paint. Um, I'm painting with uh, wet paint onto the dry page with my large Pro Art Ron Ranson Harky brush and horizontal brush strokes of a nice uh, watery mixture of the very intense colour uh, Thalo Blue. Um, it's a Cotman version and they call it intense blue, but it is Thalo Blue. Um, I'm just drawing it in horizontal brush strokes across the sky and now I'm mixing up some alizarin crimson on a clean brush um, that saves me time washing my brush out and I'm now adding that into the wet bead that formed at the base of my blue wash so that the two washes and colours will softly diffuse and transition and then I'm pulling the tips of the brush through to mix the blue and the pink in places just to give me those very sort of fine impressions of distant cloud in the sunset. And then back to my blue and I'm pulling that across underneath the alizarin crimson and that will encourage the pink of the alizarin crimson just to run into my lake and keeping the brush strokes horizontal leaving some unpainted patches that's very important for our light um, here and there, especially leaving more, the more unpainted closer to the foreground. And then quickly with my three quarter inch flat brush, clean and dry, running it horizontally um, through the water and through the sky so that I'm building up those effects of the water, flattening out the water if you like, and then adding in a little bit of variety to the marks um, mixing the blue and the pink to give me that sort of nice purpley grey colour as well but only hints of it in the sky. This should all just soften and diffuse nicely and give me a pretty sky but still fairly plain. And that'll do for the sky. Um, try not to touch it again if you can. Um, and now I'm going to get on to building up the layers of tone and colour for the rocky um, lakeside beach. Using my Harky brush I'm starting off getting a sort of an underpainting across most of it with raw sienna and that'll just begin to give, give me a little bit of a glow. It's not the right colour for the beach but if some of that peeps through due to the transparent nature of watercolour then hopefully it'll help towards the effect that I'm looking for. This is um, burnt umber and with some 
uh, Payne's Grey mixed in with it and I'm bringing this across to start to introduce my darker tones and my shadows. And you can see in the foreground, I've introduced a bit of the phthalo blue. That just gives me a bit of colour harmony to the layers. Not much of that will show through, um, but as I say, it just all helps to produce the effects that I'm looking for. Now, this is alizarin crimson and some raw sienna onto the side of the boathouse. And you might think the boathouse isn't pink. Why is it pink? Well, this will fade, but this is starting to get my reflected light on the boathouse. The boathouse is the focal point. I need it to be glowing in the sunlight. Um, so that's why I've done that. And we'll work on it a little bit more, but I'm happy with that. Now, this is perylene green. I'm just putting a bit of this lovely dark green over the canopies. Um, I don't think this will show very much, but it's just going to be enough to bring a little bit of colour to those distant trees. But the distant trees behind and around the boathouse are a framing device along with the rocks to frame the beautiful boathouse and draw attention to the light. Now, this is a little tiny bit of a mixture of the thalo blue and the alizarin crimson, and it's drawn carefully across to fill in the distant hills with this lovely cool uh, pale colour to give us some distance across the lake. Trying to keep my horizon line nice and flat, just using the tips of the flat brush. And then most importantly, some of that same shadow colour across the right side of the boathouse where the shadow of the trees is falling upon the boathouse. And now back to the beach and the rocks, and this time with the burnt umber and um, plenty of Payne's Grey in it this time, building up my darks. And as, as I begin to really darken up the foreground um, with that rich dark colour I'll start to build up more darks and shadows especially around the boathouse um, because the darker the surrounding area of the boathouse um, the more that the light hitting it will shine out and create our focal point and all these shadows across the beach are really important to balance up the tonal values in the composition and now to bring some of that sunset light into the dark rocky foreground with my pink. Don't worry if it looks a bit bright, I'll knock it back a little bit further with more dark and it will dry paler and diffuse into the dark as well. But I do need that pink and I need to introduce it across the light area of my painting. Um, and another important place for some subtle pink um, highlights. It's just dabbing gently with a bit of pink um, onto the edges of the canopies of the trees because the reflected light is being picked up there as well. And all of these subtle effects will help to make this a light filled painting, I hope. And now for the final areas of really dark, rich paint, which again is mostly Payne's Grey, um, just tempered with a little bit of the burnt sienna. And I'm working around some of those pink marks, some of the yellow marks, some of the brown ones, uh, but I'm mostly introducing lots of dark from the sh tree shadows and from um, trees that are, aren't in frame, that are throwing shadows across the beach um, of this lakeside. And so I'm getting it really dark. You may think I'm going too dark, but I'm preparing it because I'm going to be using um, the corner of a plastic card to lift out some rock shapes. So I want plenty of rich, dark paint here so that I can do that effectively. And this should be a really nice, simple way of creating the rocky texture and look of the lakeside beach.
So starting up near the boathouse and using the rounded corner of this plastic store card, I'm scraping it through the thick, rich, dark paint. And as I scrape it through, again, sort of in horizontal rounded shapes, uh, varying up my sizes and my shapes, you can see these rocks are beginning to appear as I scrape the paint out of the way, revealing um, an underlayer of paint underneath from some of the layers that I've already painted. But also, as it pushes the paint aside, the dark paint kind of um, pulls around the out outside of these rocky areas, giving us some shadow. And then a final touch, um, making up some of that shadow colour, mixing up the phthalo blue and the alizarin crimson and painting on a really nice purpley grey tree shadow across um, the right half of the boathouse. And that just pushes the light um, out a little bit more. It sort of um, accentuates the light of the front of the boathouse and then the light on the water, the light on the tops of the rocks and of course the light in the sky. Um, so I'm hoping that you can see that using these kinds of methods and ideas that I think we've managed to create a painting where the reflected light is really working on the landscape. So now to remove the masking tape, it's just ordinary decorator's masking tape and with the clean white border I hope you can see how everything works fairly effectively here I think. Um, I'm quite happy with this, I like the way that the light is very subtly um, reflected on the rocks. There isn't very much left of our raw sienna or our alizarin if we look closely, but there's just enough pink on the water, on the rocks, and especially on the boathouse and the tips of the foliage edges of the trees to give us that illusion of light uh, from the fading um, sunset hitting our boathouse and our beautiful landscape. Well, I hope that was useful. Um, another sort of um, demo where I'm trying to sort of investigate and explore ways of um, accentuating light in landscapes. Uh, thank you so much for watching. Um, please leave us a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And thank you so much to my lovely Patreon group who support this channel. And I'll see you again soon and happy painting. Bye.